Hi, it's Kern Text here again with the third and last video in a series about duplicating Linux um, from one disk to another. So, in the first video, I uh, showed how to duplicate within the same machine from one disk to another. The second, we duplicated from a disk on one machine to a disk on another remote machine. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate effectively three things really. Firstly, how to create a, an image, a compressed image of a disk. And then I'm going to show how to copy that image to a disk on the local machine and to a disk on a remote machine. So I'll start once again by showing you the setups I've got. I've got the original machine with the Linux from scratch disk. Again, I've got a op an optical disc with a live DVD in it, the Gen 2 live DVD. For the same reasons as before, we can't do anything copying live systems while they're active. And then I've got two um, spare uh, what empty discs. One's for storing the image, and the other one is for the image that I'm going to copy um, well, sorry, it's, it's going to be a destination for the um, system that I've created from the uh, disk image, so the compressed Im disk image, so it will make more sense when I come to show you. Um, basically, there's two stages. It's creating this compressed image, and then I'm going to show uncompressing that image and writing it to the um, blank disk. Then the remote machine, it's similar to the previous video, just got an empty disk and um, a live CD in the optical drive so that we can receive um, requests uh, for, for connecting via SSH and so on. So what I shall do first is... Um, I think I'll start the clone one off first. So again, because it's a blank disk, I'm just going to boot it as it is, and it it should automatically uh, boot from the live DVD because there's nothing, there's no data on the disk which it has done. So again, I'll choose the AMD64 image, press tab, and type in Nox key map equals UK to select no X session and to set my key map to UK. Okay, so if I do F disk minus L, you can see there's the second disk, or sorry, the only disk that's blank. So we will be writing to this in a, a few, well, five or ten minutes or so. So the first thing I've got to do is find out the IP address of this machine. So now I've got 80. Um, need to know this when we connect from the other machine. Then I'm going to start off the um, secure shell daemon. HD start and set a password that I know. Okay, so and again we've got an empty disk at the moment. So I'm just going to minimize that one out of the way so that it's ready to use when we come to do that part. So now I'm going to go onto the main machine. I'm going to boot this and again I'm going to press F12 to select a boot from the optical disk. So I'm going to boot from the CD-ROM and do the same as before. Well, key map properly. Okay. 
Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is to show the, the disks. So at the top we've got our disk that I, I accidentally booted from before. So that's the one we're duplicating to um, one of these blank disks and to the remote machine we've got running in the background. Then I've got um, a spare 8 gig disk here, an empty disk, and which is SDB and another one SDC. So the reason why I've got two spare disks, I need one to store the image on and the other one will be to accept that image, to write, write to that image. So first thing I need to do is to create a file system, well partition on on this disk and a file system just so we can actually store files on it. So quickly go into F disk. Create a new partition. Defaults to take the maximum. So there you go, it's eight gigabytes in size. And now I'm going to write the file system to that disk. And I'm going to mount that partition onto MNT. So if I now do disk free, you can see we've got that partition we just created and formatted, mounted on the MNT. And if I do F disk minus L, you can see there's our original disk we're going to copy from. There's the one I've just mounted onto the MNT, and this is the one we will copy the image to eventually. So if I go to MNT, it should be empty, which it is apart from the lost and found directory. What we need to do now is to um, create an image of the disk and write it to a file and then store it in this mount directory. So as before we use DD. The input file is the block device SDA because that's the disk we want to copy from. We'll set the block size as um, 8192 I think. And we want to send that to gzip as before. Um, and we want to send the output of gzip to a file with a descriptive name. So it's Linux from scratch 8.4. It's an image and it's a disk and we add on GZ because it's going to be a compressed image as well. So we'll press enter there and we'll just wait for this to compress up. Now if you had the disk space you could do all this in an alternate way. You could just DD input file SDA etc and output straight to a file so you'd have an uncompressed copy of the disk but obviously if you're copying a disk that's you know terabytes of size you're going to have to have another disk that's at least as big as that um, to be able to take the the image and then when you come to, to zip it up to compress it you're going to have to need you know maybe several hundred gigabytes to take the compressed image again possibly up to the one terabyte size depending on the type of data you've got on there and how much there is. So it's best to do the compression in line and of course you can do what we did in video 2 where I zeroed all the unused sectors by creating a file just full of zeros and by wiping the swap partition as well but I'm, I'm not bothering that this time just to save a little bit of time but that's a perfectly good thing to do. Um, you can also, of course, use a different compressor. Um, I've used gzip here just because it's fast, um, but something like bzip or even xz or 7zip, something like that, which compresses a lot better than gzip, would be um, far better. Especially um, as you're creating an image, you're likely to want to keep this around for use in the future. This is what I do. I keep it, several images 
of discs and I just compress them with the um, XZ. I found that gives me the best compression. Um, takes up the least amount of disk space and you just got this archive of disk images you can just call on when you when you need to copy them to a new disk. So I'm just about halfway through at the moment. Okay, so that's finished. So if I do a listing of the directory, you can see there's the image of the disk and it's just under two gigabytes in size. So it's about a quarter of the size um, and that's without doing any zeroing. So that could possibly be a lot smaller um, if I had zeroed out all the empty space and the swap partition. So now we've got this one file, as I say, um, if you find this useful, this is the sort of thing where you can create a little library of disk images um, and whenever you need, for example, a Linux from scratch image or a, a, I don't know, a new Ubuntu image which might be an ISO or it could be a, um, a um, disk that you've already installed and you just want to duplicate it without having to install anything um, just to um, duplicate a, an installation that you've got that you know is you know, maybe got preset software that you've installed, you can just do the commands to um, take this image, extract it and write it to the disk and you've got a system up and running in maybe just a matter of minutes, a lot faster than um, installing from an ISO and selecting options and so on. So what we should do now is um, replicate this image to the other disk on this system so if I do FTS minus L you can see at the moment it's still blank which is what you'd expect we've not done anything to it so to do that we can do cat the name of the file um, and we can pipe that to dd out file equals slash oh sorry no we've got to unzip it first of course so we gzip minus d for decompress output to the uh, standard out dd of output file equals slash dev slash right it's sdc on this machine as you can see there and block size is 8192 we'll use 
So all that's doing is it's take, taking the contents of that file, sending it to GSIP. GSIP is going to decompress that data and then the data that's uncompressed will be sent to DD and DD will write that data onto the block device SDC which is our empty or currently empty disk. In fact I'll rerun that with uh, status equals progress just so we're not looking at a screen that's not doing anything apparently. So again this, this is the um, uncompressed data that's being printed up to the screen so this should finish when it's written 8 gigabytes. Okay, that's done, no errors. And if we do F disk minus L, we can see that the C, uh, SDC hard disk has now got a partition table written to it. And we can do an E2 FSCK on that data partition. And again, that's okay. So now we'll do the command to send that to the remote machine. So it's a similar command to what we've already done. So we use cat to um, get the contents of the file. And we're going to send that this time to SSH. Give it the IP address of the machine we want to send it to, or the name if you know the name. And what was the number I had? This time was 80. So... And then the command is going to be the same as before, except we're writing it to SDA. No point in doing status progress because we can't see the remote screen. It won't display it. Um, but actually, I just thought we could probably use DD would be better here. and We can get a progress report of the compressed file. Uh, status equals progress. So that should work. So the progress will show the compressed data. So when it's reached the two gigabyte size or roughly whatever it was, um, that'll be when the command is finished. So just check what we're doing here. We're doing DD in file equals that image. It's going to display the progress of what we read from that file. And it's going to send it to SSH at that IP address, and it's going to send the uh, send the command gzip, uncompress the standard out, and use DD to write the output of that gzip command to the hard disk with block size of 8192. So again, it's a brand new machine. Well, sorry, it's not a brand new machine. It's a brand new instance of SSH daemon that's running so it doesn't know this signature so we just accept it because we know the IP address we've taken it's on a local network so it's trustworthy and we put the IP address in we used before so now you can see the data rates a lot slower a we're transferring over a network so that's slower and B it's measuring the input data set which is the compressed file so it's reading, for example, a small amount of data and then passing on to GZIP remotely and GZIP is expanding that data. So that's why this is a lot slower. But you can see already it's already done half of it.
Okay, you could see that the input stopped for a while, but it was still writing data out, which would be the buffers that were emptying. So it's completed, and there's the output at the end showing that 8 gigabytes were copied in total. So if I switch to the clone machine now, again we've got the screensaver has come on, so I'll just press the key to get that back. So you can see previously we had no data on the hard disk, so if I do F disk minus L again, we've now got some partition information, and again we can do a file check on the file, uh, system file check, sort of file system check, if I get the words right, on that disk number two, partition number two, and again it's all clean. So for the final test, what I'm going to do is to shut these machines down. So that's the uh, remote machine we just shut down. Now we're back to the main machine. I'm going to shut this one down too. Okay, so on the main machine, go to settings, storage, I'm going to unmount the DVD drive, I'll get rid of the original disk, and I'm going to move the disk that we've copied to port zero, and we'll still retain the other disk um, with the actual image on. And then on the machine that was a remote machine, I'm just going to unmount the optical drive. So let's start by booting the original machine. So this is the original, original machine on the replicated disk. And there uh, we've got the grab menu. And that's booted OK. So let's log in. And if we do... Um, F disk minus L. We should have our single partition, which is 8 gigabytes, and that'll have the image on it, which we can mount. This to be one onto the mount directory. CD into the mount, and there's our image. And we can just keep on replicating that, sending it to other machines, other disks, or you know other local disks if we're plugging and unplugging disks. So that's that. Okay, so now we'll boot the machine that was a remote machine. And again, we've got the grub menu. It's booting. No errors. We can log in. Yeah, nothing else to show because there's only the one disk here. But there you go. So, yeah, what we've done, we've created an image of a disk. We've stored that image somewhere, compressed image. And then we've used it to create a disk on the same machine that the image is on, on a different part or a different disk. Could be a different partition on the same disk. Although there wouldn't be a lot of use for that, really. And we've also taken that image and sent the compressed image over a network to a remote machine and expanded it on the remote machine but we've done that all from the local machine so i hope that's been useful um like i said i know there's been quite a few questions about how that could be done i hope this is uh the sort of thing that people were after to to replicate um the linux from scratch machines they've been creating so thank you very much for watching Goodbye.